Let the meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. Let's do this thing. I am Gable Morenci. We got a solid show lined up for you this evening. Is Zach Cummings coming off a great performance this past Saturday night, UFC Fight Night 40 in Cincinnati, full of underdogs cashing tickets and full of knockouts and full of insanity as the immortal Matt Brown returns after his uh, long layoff due to won six fights in a row, yet he was a big underdog in his own backyard against Eric Silva. But Eric Silva has been pointed at, and we said, look, this kid, you can break this kid's will. For my money, I've got a ton of more respect for what Eric Silva did, even in a loss uh, for surviving and eating all those shots that he did against Matt Brown. We're going to recap the card a little bit with Joey Odessa. We'll talk about all those underdogs that were cashing all those tickets at Man, Matt Brown is like instantly becoming my favorite fighter, man. The guy just stalks forward, comes out to avenge sevenfold. Dude's a metalhead, he's immortal, and he just freaking stalks people, man. This guy is unbelievable and somebody that I never thought would legitimately be talking about as a championship contender, but why not? Like, really? At this point, how many fights is Matt Brown really going to have to win? You know, dude's won seven in a row right now. Maybe one more fight and then give the guy a championship opportunity. So we're going to talk about uh, Matt Brown with Joey Odessa. We've had a ton of fun on the program uh, playing counter move. You guys have had a ton of fun winning free money courtesy of counter move. So uh, we're going to have uh, some of the uh, the big weeks from counter move in studio here. Talk uh, about the the uh, the future of fantasy MMA and what uh, counter move uh, are doing. Aaron Ard's going to step up and in and join me in studio. And... Uh, we got a full ass show. Zach Cummings, Joey Odessa, Aaron Ard. We got some uh, videos of the week that'll be a reminder to you why you shouldn't troll fighters on uh, on Twitter because you're probably gonna end up getting punched in the mouth. All that and more on tonight's MMA Meltdown. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gable Morenci. Let's welcome our first guest of the evening onto the program, a man who was part of a kick-ass card this past Saturday night in Cincinnati. As we stated off the top of the program, man, the underdogs uh, were barking and biting and cashing tickets. Knockouts were coming fast and furious. We're now joined by a man who just uh, notched his second consecutive victory inside the UFC's uh, octagon. And uh, even more impressively so, did it as a, a three to one underdog. Zach Cummings steps up and in. Zach, uh, always a pleasure, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. I know we're stoked to have you on. Congratulations on the win, and even more so, congratulations on the win. It must have just felt great to get back in the octagon after being off since August, man. Oh yeah, it was a uh, you know, a long uh, layover, layoff, and everything, and I was so pleased to get back in there and. Uh, you know, knock some of that rust off and everything. So I was, uh, I was happy to get in and get after it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you've been on the program before, but then you got injured and, uh, you know, the fight was canceled. Then your last fight was put off. Did you feel, uh, was there any added pressure? Were you putting any pressure on yourself or any external pressure that, man, I better have a good performance here? Or is it, you know, were you calm going in? Uh, I was actually surprisingly calm going in. Um, you know, during the camp, I kind of I kind of put a little more pressure on myself for this fight. Uh, you know, last year I had I had such a a roller coaster year. You know, and I know that we went over that last time as I was on, and then you know, and then I had more injuries, and then you know, a, a, a mishap in uh, in China and everything, and you know, I had just a lot of stuff going on. It was pretty much all uh, all connected to to really losing my dad. Uh, you know, dealing with that whole thing, it was, you know, that played a huge role on me at, at the end of the year, at the beginning of this year and everything. And uh, it, it's really anything I really wanted to dedicate that, that win to him. And uh, so I kind of put more pressure on myself just knowing that, uh, you know, I really want to go and get in and perform and stuff uh, really for him and everything. And But when it came down to fight time, uh, you know, this past weekend, I was – incredibly calm and you know collected and everything i was just i was ready to go and it was just the right time um so he comes out this guy's big hype brazilian guy jujitsu this jujitsu that 11 and 0 he comes out and you know he gets the takedown yet i saw you know near the end of the first round 
So, you know, a little bit of a scare with the attempted triangle there, but, you know, you, I wasn't panicking. I knew that you were going to grind your way through that. But I saw, you know, during the late takedown near the end of the first round, when he really couldn't do anything with it, I don't know if you felt the same way I did. I was almost like, Cabral is screwed. You know, he just did what he wanted to do, and he didn't get anything out of it. And you sort of figured it out, and then you just started teeing off in the second round. And your confidence, if it was like a video game, man, like the meter was just going up. That's how I saw it. Where, 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 am I seeing it correctly? Uh, that's, that's pretty much how I felt. You know, I was, uh, I was upset with myself in the first that I let him take me down. I really didn't think he'd be able to get me to the ground and, uh, and put my back on the mat. And so I was upset with that, but it was one of those where just I, I kind of just took a deep breath and was like, okay, you know, this is the position we're at. You know, let's, uh, let's go from here. And I never really felt in danger. You know, uh, yeah, it, he threw that slick little uh, triangle up, but it's never really tight. You know, it uh, it, it kind of locked me down for uh, for the moment, but it was nothing. Uh, it was really a, a attacking and choking stuff like that. So uh, that I wasn't too worried about that. But once, uh, even though when I was like against the fence and he had kind of like a mount on me, I, I didn't feel in danger. You know, we split, uh, we moved over. I was able to reguard into my half guard and everything, and. Uh, I was I was upset with myself that I ended the round on my back, but I really didn't feel like I was in any danger, and uh, and yeah, you know, he kind of I guess humanized him a little bit for me, you know, just keep hearing of how amazing this guy is on the mat, and you know, I mean, I was pretty much you know was in his world for uh, you know the the end of the first round and everything, and he there was nothing he could even do or even attempt to do anything, so I definitely felt uh, a lot of confidence. And and really, right off the bat, whenever that uh, when that little uppercut landed, I, I knew that changed. Basic, I mean everything right there. He, uh, he he felt the power. He did not want anything to do with me on my feet, and uh, and, I, and I could really knew that it just kind of kept driving me for the rest of the fight. And hey, we're in conversation with Zach Cummings. Yeah, and it seems that uh, you sort of frazzled him a, a little bit. He was rattled, in which. He knew that he had to try to take you down, but he was eating shots every time he would do it. So he, caught, he sort of got stuck in nowhere's land, didn't he? In which he wasn't going to hurt you standing up, and he wasn't going to be able to try to take you down from where he was. I thought you did a great job of keeping distance. And hey, I'm, no, I'm no coach or trainer here, but you know, as someone that you know, took you and bet on you, <laughs> I, was, I thought you did a great job uh, of keeping the distance. And... You know, you sort of broke his will a little bit, man. I thought it was the old Route 66 American uh, horsepower against the Brazilian, you know, jits and flash, in which he didn't, you know, he didn't want a piece of it anymore. Like, I thought you broke his will, Zach. By the midway through the third round, he was just eating shots. It looked like he just wanted to go home. Yeah, that was the game plan the whole time. You know, I, I, I knew that he was tough. I knew that he was very dangerous. You know, I mean, going in that fight, he's 11-0. 10 submission wins and everything, <laughs> but I knew he has never seen an opponent anywhere close to me. You know, someone who is just as hard-nosed and tough as I am, someone who has the wrestling that can stuff his shots, you know, and someone who has power in both hands that, you know, if I connect something with you, you're either going to sleep or you're definitely going to have a, a rattled head for a while. So, I, uh, you know, I did, even though... I knew I could probably knock him out. I was kind of, uh, I wanted to be very smart whenever I was getting in those, uh, those little exchanges and wars. I wanted to keep him at the end of my punches. I wanted to really keep my range. Even when he was kind of falling backwards and I was chasing him, I was still doing it uh, with a lot of control. And, uh, you know, I mean, I may have been able to jump in there and just start unloading punches and, and caught him with something, but also I could, you know, maybe if that's, you know, a way I could have been taken down as well. So I would rather uh, go in, keep my range, you know, keep them at the end of my punches and uh, and really be able to stuff the shots. And I think it worked out for me very well. We often hear UFC fighters uh, say, you know, I feel like I belong right now. And even though guys have been in there in the octagon a couple of times, maybe they don't have that it moment. I heard Darren Crookshank say that the other night. He said, now I know. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, he was on the adrenaline high uh, of his win, 
you know, you've been very successful in your career, 17 and three, but you know, two and zero in the UFC, and Alloway was a hyped up guy. Now you take down another hyped up guy. Uh, how comfortable uh, do you feel right now in the UFC? Uh, you know, where's your confidence level at? I imagine it's got to be pretty good after uh, two wins in the octagon. Oh, for sure. I'm in, incredibly confident, and I, I always have been. I know, I know where my skill set are. I know what I'm good at. Um, but I also have the head where, you know, I can watch that fight and this is where I have to learn, you know, this is where I need to improve, this is where I need to get better. And that's what I plan on doing right now. But, uh, I mean, for sure, I know I belong in the UFC and I know I belong at the top of the, uh, the welterweight division. So I just have to put in my time and, uh, you know, and, and just keep moving on up the ranks. So I, um, and I'm fine with that. I'm uh, completely comfortable to take whatever, uh, you know, whatever they give me next and, and go and try to solve that puzzle. Uh, you know, we've only got about a minute uh, left here right now, Zach. So physically, how you feeling right now? No one's ever going to be 100% uh, after a fight, uh, but physically, how you feeling? And are you hoping to get back into rotation quick this time, you know, maybe four months down the road? Oh, I feel great. Uh, you know, a few bumps and bruises and everything through, uh, through that hard three-round fight. But uh, Joe Silva actually came up to me that the night of the fight. That's how I felt. And said he's working on some stuff. If uh, if I want a quick turnaround time, I can have one. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be in there pretty soon. Uh, definitely a lot sooner than it was the last uh, the last fight. But uh, I feel healthy. I feel great. So hopefully it'll be you know uh, sooner or later for sure. Hey, congratulations on the win, Zach. It's always great catching up with you, man. It was great to see you back in there. And uh, like I said, it was great to see you take over the fight in the second and third round. Always a pleasure, man. Uh, look forward to catching up with you again. For sure, Gabe. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. There's uh, Zach Cummins. Uh, this guy's a badass, man. His teammates are as well with uh, with Tim Elliott and James Krause. These guys are flying under the radar uh, out there, you know, in the American Midwest. It's not an MMA hub, uh, but these guys are kicking ass. All tough guys. And like I said, it was a classic Route 66 American toughness against the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. We saw American toughness wins. It, as expected, man, you're fighting in Ohio. That's lunch pail uh, territory right there. All right, we're going to jump in. We're going to talk some counter move. Counter move has been giving away uh, tons of money to you guys with the free rolls. We welcome counter move uh, into the studio. Aaron Ard's going to join us from counter move, and Joey Odessa will join me from Costa Rica. We'll talk some uh, some numbers. We'll give you some picks for the Bellator card, and we got some kickass videos in a week. MMA meltdown continues. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Uh, you guys know we've been talking a lot about counter move, me and Robin Black, over the past uh, month and a half or so on the program. Uh, we've really enjoyed uh, playing it. You guys have really enjoyed the free rolls. You guys have enjoyed the free UFC championship uh, belts. And I'm enjoying climbing the ladder. I started out as a little uh, flyweight atom weight. I'm a welterweight uh, right now. I'm climbing the ranks. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to be a pound for pounder, uh, like all the big boys. But we welcome, uh, you know, one one of the people from uh, Counter Move uh, right now. One of the main men at uh, CounterMove.com, Aaron Art, joins us uh, in studio. Aaron, uh, what's going on, man? Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So uh, first off, thanks uh, for hooking up our viewers with all these uh, free rolls. The response has been unbelievable, hasn't it, man? When we're getting 3,000 people in some of these some of these tournaments. Is that like the largest tournament uh, that you guys have had so far? That is. That is the, the record-breaking tournament. we uh, really, really pleased with the uh, response we got. Uh, we had uh, something close in December, but nothing nothing beat uh, Fight Network's uh, 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 tournament. No, you know, it, it's right now, and of course, uh, fantasy sports is just huge right now. Uh, fantasy sports, they often say the gambling drives the National Football League, but it's to the point where, you know, fantasy sports is really a huge part of what the National Football League does. The UFC, Eric, has always been pro-gambling. Most mm -hmm. sports organizations sort of shy away from it, but the UFC actually put their odds up on the screen, and the announcers will say, oh, this guy's a minus 200 favorite. This guy's a, a big uh, underdog. Um, so, you know, the UFC understands the importance uh, of, of adding excitement for the fan to the product, and that's exactly what I think you guys are doing. And I say this to someone... It's been a long time degenerate gambler who, you know, it, it, you know, I'd be like, ah, whatever. I don't, I'm not going to play for these little fantasy points when I got 500 bucks 
on this fight. But, man, it's an exhilarating rush uh, playing on Counter Move. It really is. Yeah, and that's what we try to do. I, I think the big difference between what we're doing and what the books are doing is that if, I mean, especially when we first started out, there a lot of the fantasy stuff that was out there was just simulated gambling. Well, if you're going to simulate gambling, well, why don't you just gamble? So we had to create something that was a little bit more interesting, uh, that had a, you know, it had an excitement to it that builds throughout the event and it gets more and more exciting as the event goes on. And I think that's what we've done. You know, it really, it really does add something uh, to it because uh, you're picking the winners, but you really, really have to know what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. this really is counter move. Isn't uh, you know it isn't for the guy wearing the uh, the tap out shirt uh, you know just once a week on Saturday when he goes to the bar. This is for the diehards, like you know this is for the the, the guys because the guys that win on counter move are the guys that are picking all the freaking prelim fights that nobody's ever heard of before. And guys like Alfredo Lay here, Bandito, whatever the hell his name is, guy with the blue mohawk. He took me for a hundred bucks once. He got all these sharp guys on counter move, and you know they're always picking the prelims. And I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm pretty successful when it comes to wagering on MMA. But I got my ass handed to me on counter move the first couple of times. And, you know, you guys took some pot shots at me. Uh -huh, good, yeah. good job, yeah, rookie. Did. <laughs> yeah, good job, rookie. Yep. But I've learned quickly. And I've literally won like 10 tournaments in the last three, four weeks. Yeah, you've definitely shown some improvement. And I think that speaks to what the game is. I think it's a lot like poker. Right, I mean, it's real easy to learn how to play poker, but to be good at it, you gotta you gotta know what you're you're doing. And the guys on our site, uh, there's some guys who definitely know what they're doing. But needless to say, it is it is easy to learn. And yeah, yeah, you know, it's accessible for everyone. I don't yeah. want to let people. Oh, it's complicated. All you gotta do is you pick five fighters. Mm -hmm. You got a twenty five thousand uh, dollar payroll with the five fighters, and you know, most of the fighters are forty five hundred bucks or fifty five hundred. The favorite would be worth a little bit more. So this is where it gets interesting. Because you know, the first couple of times I played counter move, I just took who I thought were going to win the fights, mm -hmm. which it helps to have the winners. Of course, but you know, I realized never to take Jake Shields and counter move ever again. Like there's certain fighters, right? Like, yeah. You know, Diaz brothers equal good counter move. Mm -hmm. Matt Brown equal very good counter move. Jake Shields, not so good. You know, it gives you three rounds, you get five points. Yeah, and that's where the extra, actually the extra level of, of information is helpful, right? I mean, it's one thing you pick the, pick the fighters, but it's another thing you gotta understand how they're gonna win, why they're gonna win, what advantage they have. For instance, like a small fighter, he's gonna throw more volume of punches. Well, that might be somebody you want on your team rather than a big guy who's yeah. gonna lumber around and, and not throw their What hands. do you think about taking, because I see some people do this, and I've done it a couple of times, but I don't do it anymore. What about taking the the same uh, two fighters in the same fight? Is, I, that, is that a good strategy in well, your opinion? It, well, it depends on the fight. But yeah, if you know two guys are going to bang and they're going to bang for three rounds, yeah, it's good. But if one guy is not going to do much and the other guy is going to lay there, then that's not such a good strategy. Yeah, you know, and I guess it's it's tempting if it's a five-round fight, right? Yes, so it's, it's absolutely. more tempting if it's a five-round uh, fight. So, so you know, as it is uh, right now, it's very intricate. It goes by the, the fight metric stats. So you add up, you know, the punches, uh, you know, takedowns, submission uh, attempts, etc. So it's very intricate. But you guys are always looking to evolve things, uh, aren't you? So uh, what, what do you guys, uh, you know, you have some tweaks coming in the future for this? Yeah, we'll eventually put some new games. And one of the things we're thinking about doing right now is we have main card games. For instance, let's say you are out with your buddy and you, you missed the prelims, you didn't get your game in. You can come in after the prelims start and just play the main card fighters. Or maybe you just want to play just the main, maybe you only know the main card fight. So you just want to play that so you can play there. I'm a big fan of that because once I'm losing my early tournaments, it's a great way to jump in, right? All right, that didn't go so well. Let me let me get in again. Yeah, and then we're also kicking around some ideas. I mean, one of the things we're thinking about doing is doing something where you the salary cap is doesn't matter anymore. You can pick any five fighters, irregardless of the salary cap. But if you go over the salary cap, you get ding points. Well, that's that's interesting as well. But you know, as we saw the other night with Eddie Wineland, just taking a big favorite, right? And like if you just load up on the guys, oh look. Lorenz Larkin the other night was what, 5,700 bucks? Mm -hmm. He was an expensive buy. Mm -hmm. 56, 5,700. Eddie Wineland was a huge buy because Eddie Wineland was like a six to one favorite mm -hmm. uh, with the gambling odds and the salary caps sort of correlate. You guys correlate the salary cap? Is that how you come with it? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you go by the gambling odds? Loosely. No, we don't. But, it, I mean, it will obviously mimic it because obviously yeah. a favorite fighter is going to be more expensive than not. But what we're thinking about is a little differently. We're thinking about what are the projected points this guy is going to get? Like, what kind of fight this guy is going to have? And so the salary then matches what we think is going to happen. Now, obviously, we're not always right. And obviously, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's inefficiencies there. And that's where the good guys come in and they can really clean up. Now, I had a little bit of controversy. And I'm glad that you're, you know, I've got one of the main men here because... 
people are like, oh, Marenzi, you know those counter move guys. Yeah. Because I was in a bunch of tournaments the other night. And we had a little private one uh, going on with the viewers uh, of, of the show and the podcast. And you know, just follow me on Twitter at SportsRage.com if you guys ever want to get in on our cash leagues. So we're playing for 150 bucks. There's six of us in the pool. Hey, 150 bucks is uh, it's enough to get people's interest here. So somebody thought that they won, <laughs> and they celebrated like they won, but then about 15 minutes later, I passed them because I had points added to Chris Carrioso. <laughs> and I was down by 11 points, but 20 points were added to the score. Therefore, I won by nine. Then I was getting a bunch of really angry tweets, Aaron. Like, people are like, you know counter move. What did you do? <laughs> people thought I screwed with the scoring. So I tweeted counter move. I'm like, hey, guys, <laughs> explain what happened. Yeah, we don't, we don't do the stats. The stats come in from a third party. We don't do the stats. The stats come in when they come in. Uh, in that case, yeah, you were fortunate that there's a little delay in the stats coming in. But we have had some other controversies. For instance, when we have a fighter who's disqualified, uh, we had one, one instance where a fighter won, he was all set to win, and when they went to raise his hand, they raised the other guy's hand, and the ref said it was, he was disqualified. We got a lot of angry tweets on that one. Again, we don't, we don't do that. We just, we just report the stats. We don't make the stats. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's almost like oh, when, when fights are rigged. Oh, Dana White. It's like, wow, well, the judges screwed it yeah. up. It really wasn't Dana, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're not controlling the outcomes. You're, just, exactly. you're just reporting them. Exactly. It just, exactly. Uh, it just comes down to I think I think it's a great idea. Uh, as I was talking off the top, fantasy sports is obviously taken off, but combat sports fantasy has never really been able to you know, take off before for one reason or another. You know, they've tried with the CompuBox stuff, and we talk about it on the Fantasy Sports Network, in which fantasy football by far is the most popular you know, fantasy sport. Uh, baseball is very popular, but a little bit more tedious on a daily basis. It's all about football. Nobody cares about hockey. From what I understand, NASCAR and golf are like more popular than hockey uh, when it comes to fantasy sports. But I think there's a nice niche, man. Like the, your marketplace can really only get bigger, right? Like, you know, what percentage of the marketplace do you think you guys really tap? To me, you, know, you have a ton of potential for this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think worldwide there are 400 million people who watch MMA, and we have just, just started scratching the surface. So I think there's real, real potential here. Um, especially now that I think people are starting to think about MMA as, you know, as a mainstream sport. And as that grows, we'll grow as well. So, I mean, I'm actually, I mean, I think we're, we're very bullish on wh what the future how long, is. Uh, how long have you guys been in, uh, in operation for? Well, we had our real, for, our real launch was uh, the beginning of uh, 2013, uh, the end of 2012. That's when we, we had our first real launch. Um, so it's been about a year, a little over a year now. Well, you know what? I'm glad to uh, glad to be a part of it and uh, enjoy the uh, the Crooklyn tournaments as well. Oh and, yeah, uh, and, uh, big money prizes in the the Crooklyn tournament. Tommy Tollhold and uh, and all of them. Although those are tough to win because there's so many freaking people in them. There are a lot of people in it, but the cash prize is pretty big. I mean, you could turn uh, tw you know twenty five thousand twenty five dollars into five thousand uh, dollars in some cases. So yeah, yeah. somebody's going to win, right? Yeah, somebody's going to win, and you know, it's uh, those are I think are, are my favorite because uh, they're fun and. And uh, those, you know, they swing real back and forth. Once a fight happens, you know, you get a first round knockout and, you know, people's scores really swing. So it's fun to watch all the way right to the end. Well, for those of you that are watching uh, right now and to play counter move, if you put up your $25, hell, even a $50 head to head, I'm game. I'm going to be jumping in. And you took my 100 bucks that time, uh, Frito, but I'm glad I got 25 <laughs> of it back. It seems like there's basically the same dudes, the high rollers that are playing these head-to-heads. But I really enjoy the head-to-head. The -head and all, uh, all kidding aside, I enjoy playing these head-to-head -head, uh, fantasy games. It's real cool. Cool. Thank you. Hey, uh, Aaron Ward, CounterMove.com. So, hey, before we let you go, uh, I'm sure everyone's wondering, hey, when are you guys going to have another free roll here? Are we going to get something going here? I think we're having one for 173. UFC 173, we're going to have a nice big one. Um, hopefully, and I know, I think, I know also by 175, we'll probably try to break the record uh, and go for a 5,000 person uh, free roll with you guys. So it should be a lot of fun. 5,000? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's, that's pretty ambitious, uh, but I think we can do it. Uh, hey, great to see you, man. Thanks Thank for you. joining us in studio. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, hooking up our... Uh, our viewers with the prizes. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, Aaron R. Countermove.com is the website. Uh, check it out. Going to send it to Las Vegas, uh, Nevada's uh, counterparts, uh, where the premier combat sports odds makers uh, are in Costa Rica. Joey Odessa will join us. Although, I don't know. You know 
We've often thought that Joey secretly actually lives in Vegas and he just tells us he's in Costa Rica. Who knows? <laughs> MMA Meltdown continues. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's dive right into our videos of the week. We've only got three videos this week, uh, but they're all pretty cool. We're saving the best one uh, for last. Let's start off uh, with uh, famed uh, MMA referee Leon Roberts. Uh, dude's uh, from Britain, and uh, you know we've seen him do UFC uh, tilts in the past, but he was officiating a lower lower league uh, the other day in England, and he had to get involved after one of the fighters wouldn't stop uh, throwing punches. Uh, pretty great stuff. Check this out. Frederick seems to have tried to lengthen his range. Look, he's working that big hook over the top. Oh, he caught him. Caught him oh, there's a shot. He's out. He is out, Cole. That's it. He is out. Leon Roberts. Leon Roberts with the slickest back take I have ever seen from an official. Yeah, anyone that says refs don't train, watch that. Pretty slick. Well, let's add Leon Roberts to the list of uh, referees that you don't want to mess around with. Pretty slick groundwork. Dude's pretty big, too. Leon Roberts, a pretty uh, big ass dude. Some nice groundwork there. Took his back, got him in the chokehold very, very quickly. Not as uh, quick as this knockout. And, you know, this isn't the best video ever. I'm not going to lie to you. This one's okay. But this is like the fastest knockout in heavyweight history, supposedly, at 3.5 seconds. Marian Russo versus Ben Schneider. Heavyweights in the house, Rob. I think this one will end quick with a oh! bat. He is out. It's over. Big, big, big shot. Good night. Left two on the chin. I said it would end quick. It ended quick. Beauty. Big, big shot. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Referee Dan Mobahedi calls a stop to this contest at four seconds in the very okay. first round. Declaring your winner by knockout, Mary A. Pussy. Are there just like fights in England 24 7? They're fighting on the soccer pitches, they're fighting on the streets, they're fighting in the pubs, they're, they're, you know, they're fighting in the arenas. You know, God bless uh, the Queen. Uh, evidently, she's a pro combat sport. Hey, that's all good. And God bless Deontay Wilder uh, here. So yeah, we're talking about uh, heavyweight boxer Deontay Wilder. So there's this uh, internet troller. And, you know, I've heard of this guy before. He's the dude that sues everybody. And I guess this guy's pretty insane. Uh, he might have some medical issues. He probably does have some medical issues. But he thinks that he's a great fighter because I guess uh, the guys here at uh, you know, the Fight Network are telling me that his old man allegedly pays off people to, to lose to the dude. Sort of like Boxcar Willie or something like that. <laughs> so this kid thinks he's a good fighter. He's trolling Deontay Wilder on Twitter, talking crap about Wilder's children. So Wilder invites him down to the gym for some sparring, and uh, this this is real good. This I promised, you know, we were saving the best for last. This is an ultra violent rage fueled video. I'm gonna get ready. Up. You ain't gonna mess with you nobody else. Alright, man. Alright, get up. He's done. Nah, get up. You about to make me mad now. Get up. Get up. Get up. You about to get up. Get up. You gonna stop, man. All that shit. Huh? Remember, let's go. No, not right now. It is gonna be right now. This is the only way I'm being. I'm mad, guys. He's done. He's done. He's done. Why? It's gonna stop, man. Huh? It ain't gonna be good for you. You gotta watch it, man. I'm the best. I'm still the best. Man with a senior knocked out. <laughs> oh, good, man. You can't hold it. You got no one here. I am never talking smack on Twitter ever again. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, really. And that was like actually the shortened version. There's an extended version. It goes about five minutes. We didn't have the time to play it. But uh, Wilder actually cheap shots him when he's down on the ground once. He tags him in the head once. But you hear Zelenoff on the way out, I'm still the best. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, probably not. But you know, I want to give this kid props, though, actually, for going down to Wilder's gym and actually taking a couple of shots to the head. Because, yeah, we've all said things about athletes before, but how many people are going to show up, actually, and, and actually uh, fight the dude? Joey Odessa will join us from Costa Rica. We'll uh, crunch some numbers, talk about this Bellator pay-per-view and uh, break down the fights. A little recap of what happened over the weekend in Cincinnati with Matt Brown cashing in a plus 180 underdog MMA meltdown of the fight network continues. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's send it to Costa Rica, where the premier combat sport odds maker in the business uh, awaits, Mr. Joey Odessa. Joey, it's always a pleasure. How you doing? Hey, what's up tonight, G? Hey, we're doing all right, uh, Joey. We're doing all right. A, a wild card in Cincinnati on Saturday night, wasn't it, Joey? You know, we've, we've almost become accustomed, especially to the Fox cards, in which there's a lot of mismatches and a lot of uh, heavy price favorites that usually get it done. Uh, this this was uh, the exception to the rule this past Saturday night. Man, the underdogs weren't just barking, Joey. They were biting, man. They they were like pit bulls on poodles. Yeah, they sure were. A lot of people got caught speeding on those big favorites. I mean, you know, again, though, the last-minute line movement, I mean, you look at some of these bouts, I mean, jumping two, 300 cents, jumping 80 cents. I watched the Philip Poop bout go all the way up and then all the way back down. It makes for a good two-way action, but... Like I said, a market that's polluted is a good betters market. I mean, I don't, you don't see a lot of you know wise guy money out there in the market now. No, as you stated, and you know the public are going to jump on the favorites. You and I discussed the one guy. Listen, it's not a huge upset when a minus two hundred wins or a minus two fifty uh, favorite wins. Yeah, I think the public perception kind of sets the numbers. That I think a lot of squares, Joey, sort of believe just because a guy's a favorite that he's a better fighter. I mean, we, I said it before, but I don't like talking smack before fights, but there was no way in hell that Eric Silva should have been favored against Matt Brown. Matt Brown's won six fights in a row. The guy's fighting in his hometown. Uh, Silva loses to tough men, tough guys, veteran brawler type guys, and, or guys that can break his will, and somehow he's favored in Cincinnati. It's easy to say now, but I knew this before, and it's also easier for me to say it now because I did not bet on Eduardo but you and I talked about this on the Friday night podcast, uh, our final thoughts on the card before Saturday, Joey. Eddie Wineland, man, he just looked like that parlay buster, didn't it? Just stuck out in the middle of that card. Minus 500 equal parlay buster. It just smelled parlay buster on Friday before the, the card even. Yeah, I mean, it, it jumps off the page at you. I mean, you can see it now because you said boldly on the air that, and I don't, you know, I don't like to play rearview mirrors, but or criticize people's numbers. I'll just bet them if they're bad. But you said, look, there's no way that Matt Brown shouldn't be favored. Now, in hindsight, I mean, we could all say that, but you did, uh, you did shout it out. And I tell you what, he was, you know, in the beginning, I said, man, if this kid falls into something, you know, rear naked choke at the beginning of that bout. But you know what? He was all balls. I mean, he was he was uh, you know pedal to the metal. I liked it. I mean, you got a, You got a real honest fight out of him, and he did break Silva. He broke him down hard. A lot of these guys came out there. You know, Cruz Chank, another guy that you know you had on the show, and you said straight up, look, you know this, you know Eric Coke is going to have some problems here. I yeah. mean, it, you know, it happens once in a while. We catch one of these cards where where a lot of good. Well, things a broken happen. clock. A broken clock is right twice a day, Joey. But for people that have been tuning in uh, recently, you know the you know the the picks have been cashing, and you know the fighters that we've been having on. Crookshank told us this is exactly what's going to happen. And I know you can't always believe what fighters are going to tell you, but Eric Koch is a guy who's been damaged in the past. He's not the same Eric Koch that was as feared as a couple of years ago. Crookshank, uh, you know, his stock rises. He goes from sort of that flashy guy that's okay to, whoa, uh, next time he fights, I think people are going to be paying attention. But one thing about Eric Silva, you mentioned that, that Matt Brown broke him. And, you know, we saw that uh, John Fitch just sort of mentally broke him. Dung Young Kim physically broke him. But isn't this an instance, Joey, where Eric Silva's stock goes up even though he got his ass kicked just because of all those freaking tough shots that he ate? 
Yeah, if he's not damaged, you know, look, people say, oh, now in hindsight, oh, Silva's no good, Silva's no good, when, you know, three fights ago, four fights ago, everybody was riding on his jock. I tell you what, he's not a bad fighter. Matt Brown, I mean, he had so much going by, you know, so much behind him. I mean, it was it wasn't really a rocky story because he wasn't that big of an underdog. I mean, in the end, I tell you what, some some serious money pushed him up, pushed uh, Silva's number up, but and that's what people in the market that were laying it down. I mean, hindsight 100%. I mean, I needed Brown, and it worked out for me. But these guys, they don't, I, and I'll say it, People don't know what to bet unless you tell them. You know, it's almost like they get saturated with the media. They get all caught up in what's going on and, you know, all these news reports and things like that. They're all the same. Yeah. Nobody, like, keeps it real. They just we saw that with Dick Sharon. Out, you know, they, they pick their favorite. And even when they call the fights, I, I tell you, I missed Rogan this week. I, Jesus, I, I, watching some of these fights, I just, I had to turn down the volume. Look at Countdown with Teixeira, which the, num the, the number was plummeting before. People were convinced Glover Teixeira was going to uh, was going to give John Jones all that he can handle. And you and I said, it's going to be one of John Jones' easiest fights, actually. <laughs> you know, like, no, this is going to be kind of an easy one. You especially uh, be, you know, said that. So let's dive into Bellator here, Joey. And, you know, Bellator, it's a pain in the ass for both of us. Let's be honest. You're an odds maker. It's hard to make odds on fights that you don't know if they're ever really going to happen. There's always so much, you know, there's always controversy. There's always issues. This guy doesn't have a visa. This guy's hurt. And there's always problems. And it sucks for me as a host, too, because I don't know. I, I never know what fights are going to happen and what aren't going to happen either. So, you know, they got this pay-per-view here. They, they, they were going to do the pay-per-view last time and they decided against it. They put it on free TV. So once again, they've got a cancellation here. Last time it was Tito, this time it's Eddie Alvarez. Suffers a concussion in training. They put in Will Brooks here against Chandler, and uh, they're gonna go with, uh, they're gonna go with the pay-per-view instead of just putting it on Spike TV. Do you agree with that, Joey? Do you think they should go with the pay-per-view route, or do you think they, they should have done what they did the first time? Because they think it would have been embarrassing if they canceled another potential pay-per-view here. So I don't know what's worse, bad pay-per-view numbers or canceling. I, I think you're better off just putting it on free TV, in my opinion. It's all ego. I mean, they got to do what's best for business, I would say. Look, I'm going to get the pay-per-view because I want to see King Mo. You know, I, I'd like to see King Mo beat Rampage. You know, I call Rampage excuse page. I mean, because there's always an excuse afterwards. You know, I, I'm interested in this, you know, and I'm, and I'm just as scared of this Tito versus Schlemanko belt because... You know, I don't, you don't know what's going to happen there. And then, to top it off, I mean, look, anybody watch that Raphael Butler fight last week, who was the ex-boxer who hasn't boxed apples since, like, 2011, he just, I mean, he head-butted the guy. He blatantly head-butted him. I mean, that stuff starts at the top. Guys not making weight, things like this, they're just, it's unprofessional. And, you know, I, I've been a, you know, I'm critical of Bellator, but I feel for some of these fighters. And at some point, you know, it's unfortunate because if this organization does crumble and some of these guys are burning bridges, you know, because they got the wrong people in their ear, I just think it's bad. You know, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes over there. Somebody's got to be making money. But the, the ego, I mean, look, if, it's, if the show can't go, then, then the show can't go. I mean, pay-per-view, this is an expensive pay-per-view. It is. You know, is, is it worthy? All right, so let's blast through the fights uh, from, from the, the gambling uh, aspect of it. Uh, so Eddie Alvarez is out. Michael Chandler's a badass. He never lost before until the last Eddie Alvarez fight. And truth be told, and I, I haven't rewatched it in a long time, uh, Joey, but I, I thought that Chandler actually won the second fight uh, as well. Uh, you know, but it was so damn close. It was a great fight. I'm not taking anything away from Eddie. But I thought Chandler actually did enough to win the second time around, even though he did suffer a lot of damage. It was one of those deals where cosmetically, since he looked messed up, that I think the, you know, the judges buy into the blood aspect. Will Brooks is 13-1. and one. You know, pretty impressive. He lost to Sadawad, but then he, he revenged. He got uh, his revenge for that loss. He avenged it, and he beat Sadawad. You know, is Will Brooks on the level of Michael Chandler? I don't think so, Joey. So, you know, Chandler, got to assume Chandler wins as a huge favorite here. Look, I, you know, straight up, Mel Brooks would fight a better fight against. He'd have, he'd have the same chance against Chandler. Will Brooks isn't going to beat Chandler. Come on, yeah. Write it down, circle it. 
Mel Brooks, who the old uh, the old writer there, the, the old man. <laughs> yeah, the one that sat around the campfire. Yeah, they, blazing saddles. Uh, I, I think I mean, I, he would need blazing saddles to beat Chandler. No shot. I think Will has a better chance, but I, I agree with you. No shot here. So Rampage and King Mo. You know, Rampage is two and zero in Bellator. He hasn't looked overwhelming. He beat Joey Beltran and he beat uh, Mapumbu. Meanwhile, King Mo is is three and two in Bellator. He's got those two losses to uh, to Emmanuel Newton, uh, Joey. As you know, this this is kind of a weird fight here. I, I'm leaning Rampage, even though if you're King Mo, you got to win this fight. You should be able to beat Rampage, but King Mo doesn't use his wrestling enough. He's probably going to get suckered in to trading with Rampage, which Rampage wants. This is kind of a tough fight here, Joey, to bet on, and uh, you know, Rampage is too 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 high of a favorite in my opinion as well. Well, there's only one guy you can bet in this fight if you're going to bet it, and that's King Mo. He, he train he changed training camps and went down to ATT, and this is it for Mo. You know, Mo. It's not it for Mo, but well, Jackson. There's always something going on. Did he even? I don't. I don't recall off the top. Did he even make weight for his last fight? Yeah, he made weight. Yeah, from what he I understand, yeah, against Mapumbu. I, I he came in a little bit overweight. I, I don't recall. It does. It he didn't matter. look I mean, very he good. Over an inferior opponent at the time. You know, he talked the trash in his face and stuff. You know, he's gonna have to. I think he's gonna have to knock Mo out to beat him, unless Mo stands with him the whole time. And then he could, you know, maybe he'll chop him down with leg kicks. Will I don't Mo know, be but able? I'm sure that ATT's got a good plan for him. Will Mo be able to take uh, Rampage down? Uh, do you think, or at least? At will, not at will, but you think he'll successfully be able to take him down multiple times? I don't see why he couldn't. I mean, unless unless Mo's knees aren't healthy or something. Look, if Mo shoots, you know, if Mo shoots and doesn't run into something, Mo will take him down. It's that, it's that simple. And now, you know, it's the fights in Memphis. They're probably going to be rampage fans there, and you know, a hostile environment. And you don't know what's going to happen on the judges' scorecards. You know, these judges. I mean, Tennessee of all places too. I mean, they might as well just put it in North Carolina or one of those, you know, I don't want to knock the state of Tennessee, but, you know, we've seen any really big, you know, what's the last big boxing pay-per-view there? I mean, it's where they <laughs> send guys to get built up, Mississippi, Indiana, North Carolina. I mean, these commissions, you don't know what they're looking at. And you, and the fans, you know, what, what they're going to judge. I mean, again, that last week's Bellator, I, mean, I would have skipped the last week's press conference and just did the preview show for this for the pay-per-view because the, the, the show on – it was on Spike last week, and in my humble opinion, was just the, the Butler fight it would, disgusted me. I think it was a step backwards in MMA. Guys should have been disqualified. And I'll tell you what, they bet that Butler like they had Sunday's paper. I, and I opened them at a 6-1 to favorite, closed about 12-1. to It stumped from one end to the other. And, it, and not only that, the scorecards, I mean, somebody at Butler went in the fight after he lost a, a clear 10-8 first round. You know, with the point deduction, yeah, we, I, I just, I couldn't make sense of it. We got to take credit for that one. It was in our backyard at uh, Casino Rama last week's Bellator. All right, Joey, so we only got a minute uh, here. We got to wrap up uh, this segment. Uh, Schlemenko, he's won 13 in a row. He's been pretty good to us. He's getting into the pricey uh, rent district, though, as far as his numbers recently. It won't be that high against uh, Tito. But with Tito Ortiz, I don't know, man. A guy could get hurt in the first round. He could say after, oh, I broke my rib, I broke my hand, I hurt my neck. Or he could freaking drop him like he did with Ryan Bader. I'm not going to, like, come in here and say, oh, Tito Ortiz can't win this fight because he can. But he could also, you could also feel like an idiot for betting on him after the fact, Joey. You know, quickly on this one, we got to wrap it up. But what do you make of this fight? And you and I have both ridden the Schlemenko train for the last two years. Well, I tell you what, Tito's just got to go out there and give an honest fight. If Tito gives an honest fight, I'll be happy. He's, look, he's he's what he he hasn't won in you know since Bader. I mean, before that, he you know what was it Shamrock that he beat? I mean, he just uh, you know. But Tito's Tito's capable. I mean, if he puts one on Shomanko, it's not like Shomanko's not unbeatable. I mean, Shomanko, and we'll go all the way back to 2010. I mean, four years ago, of course, he's gotten better. But I mean, Hector Lombard beats Um There's no reason that I you know. I'm not going to bet Tito, but I believe that, uh, you know, I, I don't count Tito completely out of the fight. I mean, anything can happen. And, you know, again, you know, but there's another, the other two Russian guys are fighting each other in the finals here or whatever kind of matchup that is. And they, they worry me, these guys. I like Volkov. You know, I, I like uh, Volkov in that one. But uh, we got to wrap it up, uh, unfortunately, Joey. For more Joey Odessa, 
in, uh, in an uncensored uh, format on Sirius XM Satellite uh, Radio. Tune in to MMA Meltdown Radio Tuesday nights at 10 o'clock Eastern. And the Fight Network's Corey Erdman talks boxing at 9 o'clock, actually. So we got your combat sports uh, covered in a two-hour block on Sirius XM Channel 167. Uh, Joey, you're the best. It's always a pleasure, my man. My pleasure. Have a good one, Jake. There's uh, Joey Odessa. I hate cutting him off. Uh, but hey, the, you know, the end of the round is uh, rapidly approaching. MMA Meltdown continues. Well, that wraps up another edition of MMA Meltdown. Thanks for, uh, for watching the program. Thanks to all of our guests for joining us, Aaron Ard, Zach Cummings, and Joey Odessa. For all of our final uh, picks, you can always follow me on Twitter at uh, SportsRage on Twitter and check out my website, SportsRageTV.com. I'm always posting uh, picks for almost every fight. Try not to bet on every fight because you can lose a lot of money uh, doing that, but we've been picking our spots and picking them pretty well. And uh, you know what? All things considered, this Bellator card should be entertaining, so check us out online for the picks. And don't forget to check out MMA Meltdown Radio, Sirius XM Channel 167, Tuesday nights at 10 o'clock. Other than that, you're on your own. Later.